making populists out of fools. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, popular people are so popular these days that they just don't care about what they post and stuff. <laughs> hey, Heidi, how's it going? Hello. Nice to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you as well. Uh, let me see. My face is so dark because it's sunset right now. I'm going to try to put some light on this so you guys can see me better. Okay, it's okay. Nice. So, yeah, Pakistan. Pakistan. <laughs> Still continuing our conversation. You know, I have a lot of friends from Pakistan, and they... It's difficult to categorize a society based on just one article or one, you know, perspective. But uh, there are really a lot of ways that I think uh, people... There are so many ways that people struggle, right? I mean, in their daily lives. Uh, in some societies more than others. Um, but, you know, honestly, like from some of my friends that I, who I've talked to, um, Pakistan is, is very... Um, it's a nation of contrasts, right? If you have money, if you have connections, you can get away with anything. Mm. You know, I mean, the politicians are drinking, and no ranger is stopping them. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, politicians drinking all the time, and uh, mm. the corruption is, is really extreme in a country mm. like Pakistan. So yeah, none of that in Japan, though, right? Uh, so I, I mentioned before, Japan is very free. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you said, you mentioned yesterday, the police are very polite. Yeah, I think so. Very polite. Uh, because if they have some rude, um, maybe uh, the driver got angry. Then they have a long time to visit us. Mm -hmm. Police avoid that situation. Uh, they need to have a lot of, a lot of things. So yeah. I agree with you. I think, I mean, like I was saying, in the United States, police are not seen as the most polite of, you know, public servants. Um, as a, as a whole, they are considered more to be, you know, tough, um, much more, you know, business. Uh, or I mean, they have the mentality of they're the enforcers. You know, um, they enforce the law. They there have been many cases of police brutality. Uh, people victims of police brutality who have been hurt by the police, unfairly treated by the police. So. When I watch a TV and drama, very old story, police mm -hmm. was very rude. Before. In the U.S.? Yeah, in Japan. Very oh, in rude. Japan, okay. But uh, gradually, they became uh, very polite. Maybe uh, they found a very good way. It's much better for police. Yeah, I mean, I think you just get more done if you are... I mean, people respect you more, they're more willing to listen to you if you tell them nicely. Yeah. Right? If somebody is being belligerent, if somebody is being very like defensive and always screaming or whatever, then at that point maybe it's a problem. If somebody is refusing to be listen to you even though you're being nice, uh, that is a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So at that point maybe you can use force, but initially it's not you know necessary for someone to be rude. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. People in America are just, we don't have the best relationship with the police. Mm -hmm. We have a um, police box system. There are police box. Yeah. Uh, mm. So there are only one or two police uh, stay at that place. So we can ask direction. So police boxes, maybe like on the street? Yeah. Um, uh, countryside, uh, it's rare, but uh, in the Osaka city, there are many police stations, police box. Mm -hmm. So we can ask the direction if we, I rose to that uh, the way. Yeah. Uh, they have big, big, very big map. Then mm -hmm. they show, oh, next to corner, right, turn right, and this place they showed. Very kind. Mm -hmm. What about the countryside? Like, who takes care of the security in the countryside? Countryside is quite a uh, peace. Oh, so it is much more peaceful? Yes, yes. So and it's people, not that. Every people know each other, so it's very peace. <laughs> yeah, right? That's awesome. Uh, even in the countryside here, we have uh, police, you know, stations, and uh, we have... Um, a lot of police patrols, you know, they travel up and down the highways making sure things are okay. So, yeah, we have a little bit of control in that sense as well. 
Hey, Rodrigo, how's it going? Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm good. I'm fine. And you? I'm doing well, thanks. Rodrigo, you said you're from Brazil, right? Yes. Nice, okay. I think you joined my class once before, but I, I forgot some of the details. Exactly. Nice, nice. That's great. Uh, welcome to class. Ha um, have you been, uh, or I guess, how was your day? What have you been doing today? Was it a good Sunday? Sorry, sorry. Was it was it a good Sunday? Like, how was your day? Yeah. <clears throat> so. uh, did you do oh, anything sorry. special? I, uh -huh. I I I had a a problem with my connection. Sorry. No problems. I was just wondering. Um, did you do anything fun today? Did you do anything interesting you'd like to share? No, no. I watched some 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 videos and uh, I am try to. To listen to some some text in, in English. Oh, great! Fantastic. So you're practicing English and uh, yeah. decided to also join the class. That's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Have you guys met before, Heidi and Rodrigo? Yes, I think so. Okay, that's great. I think Heidi has met everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Take a lot of classes. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, that's good. We're gonna just wait maybe a couple more minutes, guys. Uh, before actually, as we were waiting, let me ask you guys a question. Um, we are we are trying today's lesson. We're going to be focusing on using uh, modals of deduction, right? Which is something that we can we're gonna explore in just a few minutes. But let's say so. Uh, imagine a scenario where let's say you're driving down a highway or driving down a road, and you see a, a house that's just completely abandoned, right? There's nobody in the house. The house looks like a ghost house. Nobody there, uh, nobody coming out, nobody coming in. What would you think to yourself if you were passing a building that, or a house that had those characteristics? What could you say about something like that? Do you guys, uh, Heidi, do you want to start? Whatever comes to mind. We don't have to use models of deduction, uh, but yeah. I I would say that uh, would be a a, 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 a danger location, and uh, no one <coughs> wants to live there. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a dangerous location, right? Uh, it may be a dangerous location. No one may want to live there, right? That's exactly. a good way of thinking about it. Heidi, what about you? See this abandoned house, nobody doing anything? No, no, no. They are little people all might be dead. <laughs> oh, yeah, the owner or whoever lives there must be dead, right? <laughs> yeah, right? So, so that's, that's a good way of thinking about it, right? Maybe everybody who had any claim to that property is no longer alive, right? So when we are using... So this, this sentence that we looked at, right, we, are, we use modals of deduction to describe situations like this in English when we, when we want to share how likely it is that something happened, right? When we are discussing probability or chance of something happening or something having happened, we use modals of deduction. We deduce. So the word deduce in English means to, you know, to assess something, the likelihood of something. Uh, and we use three or four words actually in English to describe modals to describe the likely and the likelihood and possibility of certain things right if we feel very strongly that something happened then we can use must right must is the first modal of deduction that we'll be looking at so for example the the owner of this house must be dead right if you feel very sure the owner of this house must be dead right so that Heidi used that example in her in her answer if we think that there is a chance like half and half 50 percent chance of something then we can use may or we can also use might right so may and might are the 50 percent maybe you know the owner may have died okay right? So I think Rodrigo was thinking more along that line that, you know, and this may be a dangerous location, right? Or this might be a dangerous location. We can use both of those words in, in a very similar way, right? 
And then looking at even less chance, even less chance of something being true or likely, we use the word could, right? Could is when you are 25% or less sure. I mean, these numbers are just right, just for an idea. But, you know, may, the owner could have died, right? This could be a dangerous location, right? So must is the strongest, like 95% certainty. A lot of you are really, you really imagine that something happened uh, with a strong belief, then we use must. May or might are in the middle, 50%. And could is when your confidence or when, you're, uh, when you believe the likelihood is much lower, let's say in the 25% range, right? So these are the words that we use. And the way we use modals of deduction in a sentence, right, we, the construction is, it's, it's a pretty simple formula actually, and uh, the first example that we can look at, the first construction, is if we use the subject, and then we use the modal, so might, may, must, could, whatever, and then the verb, or, and then the word be, and then noun, right? So we used, for example, the owner must be dead, right? The owner is the subject, must is the modal, the word be, and then the noun, right? The owner must be dead, the owner must be gone, right? Um, the this house must be uh, a dangerous location. This house may be a dangerous location. This house could be a dangerous location, right? So we're using all these modals and we are describing them, using them to describe a possible situation. And uh, what about? So give me an example, guys. Let's say this time you are watching a football game, okay, and Brazil is playing Japan. So I'll put both of you guys on the spot here. Right. Brazil is has made seven goals, Japan has made two. Right? What can you guys say about the performance of these teams? Maybe you let's use modals of deduction. Let's use this construction. So Rodrigo, you're a proud Brazilian. Right? What can you say? What can you say about the situation? Uh, must be uh, <laughs> must be a normal res result. This so. What's the subject in your in your sentence? Ah, okay. <clears throat> result. So then let's start with that subject, right? So because we want to follow this construction, so the result. And then the modal you said was must, right? Okay. So then let's finish the rest of the sentence then. Uh, it's not this must be a must normal, be, uh, a normal result. Result. <clears throat> yeah, result works, right? So I guess what you're trying to say is uh, this must be a, a norm, the normal result for Brazil. Ah, uh, okay. Right or something like that. Like it's it's not unusual uh, that uh, Brazil is doing so well, right? Okay. Because you guys have a very strong football team, so you can say this must be, or this score must be a normal score for Brazil. Mm, okay. Right. What about Heidi? What could you say about this? Um, Brazil uh, might be lucky. Brazil must be lucky. <laughs> so Heidi thinks that it's actually better <laughs> it's that Brazil is winning because of luck. Rodrigo, how do you respond to that? Uh, Heidi really? must be Heidi must be crazy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm just really, joking. Yeah. Really, Japan uh, Japan has uh, had a, a great coach in Zico that. Uh, Coach the soccer team of the Japan many years. Mm -hmm. The Brazilian good soccer and learning how to play for the Japanese. Yeah, so so Rodrigo is showing a lot of respect to the Japanese team here, the history of Japan, uh, Japanese soccer or Japanese football. But you know, if we if we think about it from let's say from my perspective, right, or something else that someone could say. I could say something like, the Japanese team must be tired, 
Mm, okay. Right? Or uh, the Brazilian team uh, could be uh, much stronger. Okay. Right? So looking at it even from a basic perspective, the Japanese coach must be uh, bad. Who knows, right? I mean, I can just... I can make an example, I can make a, take a situation and I can use this construction to describe what I think is likely, right? What I think is possible. So, go ahead, Heidi. Yeah, yeah but the team must be unfortunate. Yeah, the Japanese team must be unfortunate or it could be having bad, could be, could have bad luck or could be uh, uh, facing um, bad luck today or something, right? Could be out of luck. We can even say that. The Japanese team could be out of luck, right? So this is one example when we can use this kind of construction to talk about identifying a situation, right? When we are judging somebody or something, when we are making a judgment about a situation, the subject changes, the construction changes just a little bit. So if the construction is still the subject, you know, whatever, he, they, Heidi, Rodrigo, then a modal, and then B, so that part is still the same. But then instead of the noun, we use an opinion, right? So let's say somebody tells you, I work 60 hours a week, right? And then you can say, wow, that must be very tough, right? That must be very tiring. That must be very difficult, right? So you're using so the subject, that in this case, you know, um, and you can use... The construction could be, must be, maybe, right? And then your opinion. Your opinion is, oh, so tough. It's so difficult, right? So you can use those kind of sentences as well. So let's say I come to you, Rodrigo, and I say, um, uh, that man uh, drives a Ferrari, right? Um, what, can, what can you say about him without knowing anything about him? He must be... Although he must be richer. He must be rich, right? Yep. Yeah, he must be or he must be very rich. Very rich, okay. Yeah, he must be very rich. Or you could I could he say he he, he Yeah, go ahead. Driver. <laughs> he must be a what? Driver. <laughs> he must be the driver? Yeah. How why? How why would you say he's a driver? Mm -hmm. He's driving someone's car. Oh, so you don't think it's his car? You don't think it, you don't think it's his personal car that he bought. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah, that's that's another opinion that we can say about somebody, right? Um, we can say, for example, I could say he must be richer than me, right? Because I can't yeah. afford a Ferrari or something like that, right? So these are ways that we make opinions out of sentences. The constructions that we use: subject plus uh, the modal plus be, and then the opinion itself, right? So, and then the one last example that we want, we can use when we talk about modals of deduction is we can also talk about the past, right? So, maybe someone is telling you about their life, right? And you can, you can, make, a, you can make a judgment or you can make an opinion about their life based on what they share, right? So, let's say, like, when we, let's say you hear a story about someone who was very poor before he became a millionaire, Right, so somebody says, you know, Jack uh, lived on just a few hundred dollars um, a month. Right, you can say that must have been so difficult. Right, so we're talking about the past. We use the subject, the modal, which is, I'm saying must, and then have, and then with the past participle. Right, that must have been so difficult. Right, that must have been such uh, such a struggle, right? Who knows? So, Rodrigo, let's say you come to somebody and they um, they tell you that, or you you hear in the news. See you later, Heidi. You you see in the news that uh, somebody is somebody's house burned down. Right. Yeah. The house the was house? just destroyed. Oh, yeah. Okay. House burned. Burned down. Yeah. Okay. So. What can you say, maybe using this class construction about their situation? Um, the, the situation must be must be no. The situation 
must have been difficult for uh, this family. Absolutely, right? That's a great way to think about it. The situation must have been very difficult for this family, right? Yeah. When we read about, you know, natural disasters and hurricanes and floods and fires, all these things, right, we can make judgments about the situation. That must okay. have been so difficult. That must have been so tragic, right, yeah. for, for the people involved. So that's a, that's a good way to think about this. And... The, the very last thing when it comes to this lesson is we can also use can't and couldn't as uh, words that we are using in the modals, right, to describe the negative instead, okay. right? So, for example, let's go back to the example about the Ferrari, right? So you see okay. a guy driving a Ferrari. How can we use can't or couldn't in that sentence maybe? We said before, that guy must be very rich. What can, how can we use couldn't or can't? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, can't, I can't buy uh, some car. I can't buy this car in... No, no, let me see. I can't... <coughs> let me see. We want to use the same construction, right? So the same formula that we saw before except the modal here is going to be can't, right? So, uh, it's the same construction as before. So the subject plus the modal plus B and then the rest of the sentence. Uh, okay. I, I can say I can't have, that's it? I can't have been, that's it? Well, no, I mean, you can add more to the sentence, but you want to start with the subject and then the modal and then B, right? Or you can use the past participle if you want, right? So, um, are, you, are you trying to say, I can't have been something? Yeah. So, um, uh, maybe no. we... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I guess one way to think about it is you're looking at somebody's car, right? Um, uh, he can't have been... Uh, or, for example, that car can't have or couldn't have been cheap. Uh, okay. Right? That car mm -hmm. couldn't have been cheap. So, in this case, couldn't is better than can't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can, that, could is, uh, is some, is sound, uh, sound better for this phrase. Mm -hmm. And also, for example, if we use can't, we can talk about the guy, right? So, the yeah. person driving. How can we talk about him using can't, maybe? And let's use the second construction. Let's use the opinion one. The subject plus the modal plus B, and then an opinion about this person. He's driving a Ferrari, so let's talk about him. He, he can't be uh, on the lorry this year. Yeah, he can. So you, you said he can be on the lottery this year. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So, or he, he, that works, I guess, but we would maybe want to say, uh, because we're describing an opinion, right? We, it what might yeah. be better to say, he can, he, he could have yeah. won, or he could be the winner of the lottery this year. Yeah. Right? He could be the winner of the lottery this year. Now he has a, a brand new car, right? Or even if we talk about him, like, he could be, or if we use can't, he can't be poor. Yeah. Right? Someone driving a Ferrari, he can't be poor. Sure. Yeah. Right? So that's another way to think about it. There's many different examples, right? So when we look at these, the modals of deduction, we can use may, might, could, must, can't, couldn't, right? Really depends on the situation. But the, the, the formula generally stays the same, right? Okay. The formula we're using the subject plus the modal plus B, and then either the opinion uh, or the noun, and then the other one is if we have the past participle, which is the subject, the modal, then have, and then the past participle. Okay. Yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna, it's gonna make a little bit more sense, I think, when we read the article. But so far, do we have any questions about this, Rodrigo? No, no, no. Clear. Okay. Let me know, though, because uh, this is something that is does change between um, different sentences, and yeah. we want to be able to explore those options. So, okay. 
Let's take a look at this article then, Rodrigo, and this one today we are looking at something in aviation actually, right? So I really enjoy reading about science and technology and how, for example, aviation is helping um, airlines, in this case, airlines save a lot of money, right? So I'm going to also screen share my screen so you can see it. And there is one word that this article uses, which is actually very American, and I want to describe that word before we start. So it says, those little doohickeys save Southwest Airlines 54 million gallons of fuel annually. Savings that benefit customers, right? So what does doohickey mean? Doohickey is a, it's, it's, it's a very difficult word, actually. It's, it's conversationally in English. Doohickey mm -hmm. just means like a thing, like an, an item. It's a it's a funny way to say an item or a thing or like a like physical object that you can't really describe. Okay. Uh, so it's 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 a funny word. This article it was written in very like conversational English. Uh, it's not formal English at all. So the author decided to use a, a funny word in the title. Those okay. little doohickeys, right? So and then we'll read about these doohickeys, these little items that he's talking about. So. And we're talking about Southwest Airlines with, just to give you a little bit of background, Southwest Airlines is kind of like, um, it's a low-cost uh, airline. So people who fly Southwest, you can get a very cheap ticket from, let's say, like Texas to California or even, you know, much further away. So this, these, this airline is very popular for people who want a cheap way to fly between major cities in the U.S. It's a low-cost carrier. Okay. Um, so let's start with this. So Dallas. Southwest Airlines currently saves roughly 54 million gallons of fuel each year thanks to those little doohickeys you see at the end of the wing on the Boeing 737 aircraft, which also have the added bonus of reducing emissions. These little doohickeys are formally called winglets, okay, winglets, uh, and are featured in ads... <coughs> In, sorry, in this case, I can say that this doohickey is like a, a device on the air, airplane? Yeah, it's a physical extension of the wing. Ah, okay. Right, and we'll see a little picture of it, actually. I think they show a picture in this article where it's, it's the wing just bends up a little bit at the end, and ah, okay. as a result of this uh, physical change, the, the airplane's aerodynamic, aerodynamic ability actually improves and it uses less fuel. Oh, okay. right? it, uses, it uses less gas. So these, these little doohickeys are formally called winglets. That's the official name for them. And are featured in ads as one, of, as one more way the carrier, the Southwest Airline carrier, is working hard to keep fares low. Southwest Airlines believes low fares should never mean low service. Right? Today, the carrier attributes nationwide low fares to the fuel savings incurred by those little doohickeys. Customers can take advantage of these fares as low as $69 one way through Monday, September 30th uh, at 11.59 p.m., so the end of the day. A 14-day advance purchase is required. So it's just it's describing some details. I can actually, we can actually skip this paragraph because it's very... Um, specific but for example so this this paragraph it's saying examples of Southwest Airlines low fares $69 yeah. one way between Phoenix and uh, Burbank is a city in California you know many different places it's a very cheap you can fly between for example $99 between New York City and Milwaukee Milwaukee yeah. is clo close to where I live so th these winglets are really helping them save a lot of money and they're saying here, so this is just kind of history of the airline. Um, Southwest is the nation's largest carrier in terms of originating domestic passengers, boarded, and including wholly owned subsidiary AirTran. And they, they operate the largest fleet of Boeing aircraft. Uh, they have a lot of planes, and they fly to many destinations in many states, as well as... Uh, six international countries, right? So they do a lot of, uh, they're doing a very well in terms of businesses, in terms of their business, and they're making a lot of money. Um, 
and this is so basically the article is pretty short but we see here let me actually see if I can show you an example of winglets uh, Rodrigo I think it's going to be make, make make a lot more sense okay. so it's these things at the end of a wing for example see how the wing goes up no oh, okay so this is the doohickey that they're talking about having this at the end of your okay. wing in a in a plane makes it much more aerodynamic. So this is an example of actually Southwest Airlines. This is the exact plane that we're talking about. Southwest Airlines and they have okay. these winglets at the end, right? So it really helps them save a lot of cash. Interest. Yeah, right? So that is the focus of the article. Short article, but talking about really where the you know the fact that this airline has been able to do a lot of this uh, has been able to save a lot of this money can be traced to the fact that they have these winglets on their on their planes. So, question for you, Rodrigo. Uh, okay. Why do you think, besides uh, the fuel reasons, why do you think airlines are um, um, adopting winglets? Why do you think they're becoming more and more popular? Mm, why the, the the flies become more popular? Well, why are these winglets becoming more popular, do you think? Okay. <clears throat> First of all, because of the reduce of the the fuel, fuel the fuel consume. That's it. Yeah, so that's a big reason, right? And also okay. at, at the beginning of the article they said that um, they do have an effect on reducing emissions as well. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, so what is what does that mean if it's if reduced emissions? What does that mean? Uh, that means that the these companies uh, has been, has to contrib contribute for the the clean of the air. I don't know. If I can say this for every every place on the on the on the world mm -hmm. and uh, and. Uh, I uh, I I think that I saw that this be is become more um, how can I say more safe for the for the flight with the aerodynamic. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So those are all great reasons. And with the emissions, I think you you were able to really understand the the problem with that was that you know we have a lot of. Um, we have a lot of concern for the environment, right? So yeah. when when emissions are high, even for cars, you know, um, people are trying to reduce emissions um, to prevent um, the destruction of the environment, the destruction yeah. of the ozone layer or whatever. And planes do a lot of, they burn a lot of fuel, you know. Yeah, yeah. So not only are winglets helping with the uh, cost, but they're also better for the environment in this example, right? Um, mm. And this is something that I think, uh, you know, do you think perhaps, I don't know in Brazil if maybe you were able to fly a low-cost carrier. I think the main airline in Brazil is called, is it called Gol by any chance? or um, Gol and Tan. Gol and Tan as well, right? Yeah. So do they, do you know if these airlines have included winglets in their design? Uh, I I think almost uh, I don't know I, I believe that sometimes half the airplanes he I, I I don't know I I think the sometimes half these airplanes has this little device mm -hmm, the little doohickey <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it, it's I'm not sure, but I believe. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at some pictures actually of Goal Airlines right now, and I think you're right because uh, I sent the. Actually, let me just screen share real quick. I think it's going to be more fun that way. Yeah. Um, they have uh, winglets, and I mean, it's something that is. I mean, I don't know if it's if it's a. This is Goal Airlines right here, right? So it has the winglets perfect. here at perfect. the end of the. Yeah, yeah it has perfect. that winglet. And they, yeah. I mean, it's something that I think is uh, is getting more and more popular. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, because we do see maybe they these airlines are following the example of, of, of these American airlines, and they want to you know reduce their emissions and they want to get to that level of um, you know more more cost efficient we should say right 
cheaper and cheaper tickets. And what does that do? Do you think partly Southwest Airlines, we look at this example of Southwest Airlines, do you think that uh, they are able to offer lower tickets prices because of this, uh, because of the lower fuel cost? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think that the <clears throat> on the ticket price, uh, the fuel is sometimes half of the price. I don't know, but I believe that's it. And when you reduce the consume, uh, the chicken become has can become more more lower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. The ticket price can get become a lot lower. But you know, have you uh, had a chance to maybe fly? Um, regionally, so let's say maybe you're going from Sao Paulo to Rio or from Recife yeah. to Sao Paulo, right? I mean, yeah. those those short trips, um, what else do a lot of these low-cost airlines do that, or what do they not do that allow them to keep uh, prices low? What are some things that they do differently? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, once I saw uh, uh, a test article that the, the, in the arrive on the departments is the situation where the consume of the the food is the lower is the is the is the place uh, the part of the trip where the airplane consume more food. Mm -hmm. And uh, I watched uh, the last week an uh, uh, article uh, program that the government um, was trying to, to define a new route for these airplanes in between Rio and uh, between Rio and Sao Paulo with the GPS and uh, a new, the final new road that the, become the trip three minutes more short, more, more... Three minutes uh, shorter, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is... Uh, and with these situations, uh, the clients and the government believe that the price of the ticket become more lower. Mm -hmm. And... Exactly because of the the fuel, uh, and uh, the estimate of the for the companies is to how can I say when you um, how can I say let me see to save to save more one hundred millions of dollars for a year. I don't know if they're exactly this, but uh, there is a big impact of the price ticket. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, right? Just by shaving off a few minutes of a yeah. flight, they are spending, for every flight that they do, they're yeah. saving a lot of money, right? Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's the, that's the idea behind a lot of the things that they do. And I think it's interesting also because in the U.S., for example, maybe you saw the same in Brazil, but in the U.S., Southwest Airlines, for example, this particular airline, they don't do seat assignments. They don't assign people seats, right? No. So you go into the plane, you can sit wherever you want, no. right? Uh, yeah. So they reduce, I mean, like bigger airlines, they are much more strict in terms of you know, figuring that kind of stuff out, and they need to hire more people, maybe to you. You choose you know, every place on the airline. You can choose That's any it. anywhere you want to sit. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So you can sit in the back. You can sit in the front. You can sit in the middle. You know, no one cares. Like a bus. <laughs> like a bus, exactly, right? So I think many of these things also they can use to just to reduce the stress and the employees that they need, and you know, pay. Less mu I mean, they don't have to pay as many people if you don't have uh, strict seats, seat assignments, things like that. Or maybe, honestly, they might just do that because it's uh, more convenient for the passenger, right? Um, depending on the flight, it might not be, it might not make sense to have assigned seats. Some of their trips are very short, right? Yeah, yeah. Almost, 
almost like a bus in the sky. Like you get on, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. and you sit down and you just go, right? Yeah, yeah. And and then I think another thing to think about is also they don't really have a lot of in-flight service, right? So when you're traveling, they don't really have food. Like it's a short flight, maybe two hours. They just pass, like they just give you water or like juice or something and then or soda and that's it. Like they're not having to spend a lot of money on the food. They're also saving a lot of money on the gas uh, on the for the flight and you can sit wherever you want. It's just like a bus almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the same yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Here in Brazil, it's yeah. the happen the same the same thing in the short trip and the short flight. Uh, the company uh, uh, offer for the clients only uh, peanuts, only this. <laughs> Just peanuts, right? And it's the yeah. same here. It's the same here. You know, some sometimes for for passengers, it's a little, it's a little, uh, uh, um, a bit of a hassle because you know, if if you've been traveling for a long time, then you might be hungry and you might need more food, but. Uh, they don't offer that really. Low-cost uh, carriers don't do it. A lot of normal planes actually also don't do it because it's considered to be it's cost more money, right? Yeah. And so they can keep their costs low with a lot of these strategies uh, for ticket prices, for gas prices, for fuel, uh, lower cost of food, and all these sorts of things as well, right? So, do you think maybe what are so? I, I really liked when you said that the destination is now between the flight between Sao Paulo and uh, Rio, the, they, they shaved it by just three minutes and now they're saying that there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of money saved. Give me one second, Rio. Okay. That's a loud uh, phone. Uh, no, no so, problem. So yeah, can you think of some other ways, Rodrigo? So let's say you work for Goal Airlines, right? Okay. Let's and what are some other ways that you could think of companies, you know, that they could? Let's try to use a modal, right? How are how are some other ways uh, the airline could shave costs, could reduce their cost? Yeah. Um... It's difficult. It's difficult, but um, I would hey, try. Hey, you're the boss, Rodrigo. You're making uh, <laughs> you're making four million dollars a year just to come up with these ideas. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me see. Um, <clears throat> really, uh, in short trip uh, nowadays, we don't have uh, anything, almost anything for the the customers. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe. The, uh, really, uh, in my opinion, I I have a, a other op, uh, other way to think. I, I really I would like to, in, in this opinion, the the company would have an increase on the price because I have uh, I am very tall, and the space between two chains for me is very short. Mm -hmm. I would like to, to uh, why? Uh, how can I say to uh, stretch your legs? Stretch your legs, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You want to stretch your legs? For, yeah, in this for the this stretch my legs, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, for the for the company would be a, a tragedy, and the price would be very very. Uh, cheap, cheap and old, uh, expensive, mm -hmm. and uh, really, I, I don't know. Sometimes, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I have no idea what to do more to lower the price. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, the, in the future, we we will try to. Uh, how can I say? Uh, I'll. You know, let me see. Uh, stand. <laughs> I don't know. Uh huh. I maybe know. have people stand on the flights. Yeah, Tom. Maybe, maybe this in the future. Yeah. It's uh, like a bus. 
Everyone's half the people are standing, half the people are sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a situation where the price could be more cheap? <laughs> Well, you have a safety concern there, I think. <laughs> you, know, you don't want passengers to uh, get hurt either, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Especially if the plane starts to shake in the middle of the no, trip. No, yeah. no. Just kidding. It's, no, it's not possible to, to happen. People standing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I know, I think you bring up a good idea that, you know, when we talk about where we can cut costs, right, what about using the Internet? Mm, how how can could you so for example let's say like you know an airline they have to uh, staff the people at the beginning of the journey they have to staff um, the the people in the in the airport the booth they have to you know you show them your you can you can your boarding pass and your documentation and all of that information right if they just have electronic uh, desks maybe. You know, yeah. uh, one person. Maybe they they already have this actually in in many places in the in the yeah, US, yeah. right? So I, I'm sure in Brazil also. You know, you just yeah. You do you you swipe your you put your license or your passport or whatever, and they give you the boarding pass very quickly, right? Okay. I, I'm thinking. I mean, is it possible to do that for luggage also, for your baggage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is uh, I think it's possible. Uh, the the one person put your luggage on the machine you know, on the some kind of machine some yeah. some kind of machine yeah the belt the baggage belt almost it's a belt that goes around right it travels like yeah. this yeah 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 uh, this is uh, this is the way for contribution to many many people to become Unemployment. I don't know. <laughs> I know, right? Because we yeah, are yeah. we are we are thinking of ways to make everything uh, automated, and uh, people will lose jobs if they do this, right? Yeah. So I think it's a balance. I mean, what do you think about that, actually, Rodrigo? Do you think it's it's how far is too far? Should we not do all of this so that people still have jobs? Um. Sorry. Repeat for repeat for me. Sure. Like, how? What is how? How important is it to be for a company to have low ticket prices? For example, should we should a company value the employees who are working for the company and maybe have you know more expensive ticket prices because of that, or should a company say no? We our biggest focus is just low cost, low cost, low cost. Even if that means that we have less uh, employees, um, in my opinion, I, I think the the balance between the price and service uh, must be uh, many price, service, and the safety on the the flight. Mm -hmm. Is the point of the uh, the the question, mm -hmm. and the company. Uh, has to to find this balance between three these three situations these three cases. Mm -hmm. That's a very good way of thinking about it, right? So you said price, safety, and and quality, right? Or service? Yeah. 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 Price, quality, and service. That's a great way of thinking about it. And uh, do you think airlines are doing a good job? Like like in Brazil, is it something that? Is is needs to be changed, or how do passengers feel about uh, about about their about the service, about the quality? Uh, really, the problem here in Brazil is not. I think the company. I think the most the 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 biggest problem here is the airport, not the the company, because the the service of the company is uh, is good. In general terms, but the infrastructure of the main airports uh, need to become need to become be become better. Mm -hmm. um, in some place in the big series, we have uh, great airports that uh, also to. <coughs> To change something, but in series, uh, 
where the it's not so so how can I say <clears throat> not so big not, not so not major so big, yeah, yeah, yeah not major yeah. cities yeah, yeah the airport's the biggest problem biggest problem and the company uh, don't want to operate in this airport and uh, for me the biggest problem is the airport not the the companies mm -hmm. the infrastructure of the airport is it just very busy? Is there a lot of traffic? Or I mean, what's the problem with the airports? No, no, it's the infrastructure of the por oh, the operation. Not not the not so busy, but uh, sometimes we don't have uh, in a lot of cities some uh, equipments on the the on the lane and uh, for example. When we have a day when the the weather is not good, it's raining. Uh, sometimes the the flight will cancel. Mm -hmm. we'll ca that's it. Uh, cancel it. And uh, if we have uh, uh, equipment on this airport that allow to op the company operate in this day with the uh, with this. This machine, this this uh, kind of a kind of equipment, mm -hmm. uh, we we really we really we have we 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 have most flights uh, across the the company, and mm -hmm. this is the kind of problem that we have in some airports where we don't have most. Uh, Population uh, really in the last uh, year, the government uh, to how can I say uh, to maybe improve the situation? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, oh. yeah. That's it. Through uh, through uh, uh, a program to to provide. Uh, um, <coughs> To provide some sort of uh, uh, some sort of money for this uh, company, this this uh, airport, and uh, the government uh, <coughs> is nowadays try to to become this airport more attractive for this company, and uh, we hope that is. Can become uh, real in the next years. Mm -hmm. The problem here is clear: the airports, some some sort of some kinds of airports in lower cities, mm -hmm. not the not the the company. Mm -hmm. So it's not the airline companies; it's the airports. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. This is the our big problem. That's actually very surprising for me because I think in the United States it's the it's a combination of, of both of the problems, but I think even more the combination we we complain a lot about the airlines themselves. Uh, for example, yeah. some airlines are considered to be very. Southwest has a good reputation for the most part. Some of the larger airlines, like one of them is U.S. Airways. U.S. Airways is horrible. I mean, every time I've flown U.S. Airways, just delays. Um, if cancellations, you know, uh, missed flights. I mean, they don't have the uh, maybe the plane is uh, has a broken part or something, and they don't have the people to fix it, so they yeah. cancel the flight. You know, so things yeah. like that are, are very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for example, here in my city, uh, we have an airport. And uh, some in some days where the how can uh, uh, where the weather is not good, mm -hmm. as I said before, uh, we need to uh, to drive uh, uh, to the Rio to take a flow, uh, a flyer. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, these situations uh, happen in very very parts of the the country. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the government don't put the this kind of machine almost uh, in mm -hmm. always uh, airport. 
like radar equipment technology, right? They don't have them. Uh-huh. Yeah, ra ra radar, yes, but uh, others, others equipment, not. Mm -hmm. So in in flights, for example, one of the in in bad weather, uh, we uh, planes use something called the ILS. It's instrument landing system, right? Uh, it's something yeah. that uh, planes okay. use. Planes use ILS for when they are about to land, even if it's nighttime or bad weather, that they can still use ILS to land safely. No. And yeah, maybe these uh, airports don't have, because ILS costs money, right? You need to build the infrastructure, uh, you need to invest in that technology. So maybe some of these smaller airports don't have that. You know? Yeah, yeah, this happened in exactly here. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. And I mean, Brazil, I think a lot of people fly, right? Because it's such a big country. Yeah, yeah. But the, in the last couple of years, uh, the government has to, be, be to, to, to change these situations. Mm -hmm. And uh, improve this airport. There is a lot of problem to the government spend to... And uh, we, we have a... a, a uh, new situation here. Uh, the government has to change the run of the airport for the private company, mm -hmm. and uh, especially this lower airport. Um, yeah, I believe it's a it's a good uh, it's a good uh, uh, it's a good problem because we have a lot of companies that want to operate this airport mm -hmm. and when we don't have uh, uh, most uh, uh, interest and uh, this can be a, a good uh, a good problem here for example in my, in my city the private company to <coughs> to become the running uh, manager of this uh, this airport, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of Im improvements in this local airport. Mm -hmm. So the switching the management from the government to the private companies has been a good improvement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very yeah. interesting. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, really, here in Brazil, when the country is very Big, uh, the government don't have the the way to um, fix all the problems, right? Yeah, yeah, it's mm -hmm. very difficult. It's very difficult. We have uh, uh, more than fifty, sorry, fifty thousand, fifty thousand cities on the country, mm -hmm. and a lot of airports, and uh, it's very impossible to to go to govern. All of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Very, very cool, Rodrigo. I learned a lot. I, I didn't know much about w when I go to the airport in the United States. I see, for example, a flight from Chicago to Sao Paulo. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't. I had very little knowledge of uh, inter within Brazil itself what the situation is like, and it's very interesting, yeah. you know, because. We, I think all the airlines in Brazil, we saw Goal, you know, they are using technology like the winglets and things like that, but we still have lots of challenges that remain in terms of making the experience as, as yeah, best as possible, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, yes, that's it. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome, Rodrigo. It was a pleasure once again to speak with you. And when when do you plan on joining my class again? I think... Uh, I think you're busy these days, maybe. Yeah, yeah, a lot of work, but uh, uh, what day is the next class? So I have a class every night uh, at 9 p.m. Chicago time. Uh, 9 p.m. Chicago time? 9 p.m. Chicago time. So okay. Monday through Friday, I have 9 p.m. Chicago time, and then Saturdays, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Chicago time, and Sundays, okay. 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, okay, perfect. I will yeah. try to watch every. Awesome. I hope to see you soon again, Rodrigo. Thank you. Yeah, have a great rest of the night. Thank you. Yeah, bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, countryside, uh,
but uh, in the Osaka city there are many police station, police box. Mm -hmm. So we can ask the di direction. If we, I lost that uh, the way. Yeah. Uh, they a... have big, big, very big map. Then mm -hmm. they show oh next corner right turn right and this place they showed very kind. What about the countryside? Like who takes care of the security in the countryside? Countryside is quite a, a peace. Oh, so it is much more peaceful. Yes, yes. So and it's people, not that. Every people know each other, so it's very peace. <laughs> yeah, right. That's awesome. Uh, even in the countryside here, we have uh, police, you know, stations, and uh, we have. Um, a lot of police patrols, you know, they travel up and down the highways making sure things are okay. So, yeah, we have a little bit of control in that sense as well. Hey, Rodrigo, how's it going? Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm good. I'm fine. And you? I'm doing well, thanks. Rodrigo, you said you're from Brazil, right? Yeah. Nice, okay. I think you joined my class once before, but I, I forgot some of the details. Exactly. Nice, nice. That's great. Uh, welcome to class. Ha um, have you been, uh, or I guess, how was your day? What have you been doing today? Was it a good Sunday? Sorry, sorry. Was it was it a good Sunday? Like, how was your day? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, did you do oh, anything sorry. special? I, uh -huh. I I I had a a problem with my connection. Sorry. No problems. I was just wondering, um, did you do anything fun today? Did you do anything interesting you'd like to share? No, no. I watched some 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 videos and uh, I am try to to listen some some text in, in English. Oh, great! Fantastic. So you're practicing English and uh, yeah. decided to also join the class. That's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Have you guys met before, Heidi and Rodrigo? Yes, I think so. Okay, that's great. I think Heidi has met everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Take a lot of classes. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, that's good. We're gonna just wait maybe a couple more minutes, guys. Uh, before actually, as we were waiting. Yeah. Oh, in Japan. Okay. But uh, gradually they became a very polite. Maybe uh, they found a very good way. It's much better for police. Yeah, I mean, I think you just get more done if you are. I mean, people respect you more, and they're more willing to listen to you if you tell them nicely. Yeah. Right. If somebody is being belligerent, if somebody is being very like defensive and always screaming or whatever, mm -hmm. then at that point maybe it's a problem. If somebody is refusing to be listened to you even though you're being nice, uh, that is a problem. Right. Mm -hmm. So at that point maybe you can use force, but initially it's not you know necessary for someone to be rude. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. People in America are just, we don't have the best relationship with the police. Mm -hmm. We have a um, police box system. There are police box. Yeah. Uh, mm, so there are only one or two police uh, stay at that place. So we can ask the direction. So police boxes maybe like on the street? Yeah, um So yeah, none of that in Japan though, right? So I I mentioned before Japan is very free. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you said you mentioned yesterday the police are very polite. Yeah, I think so. Very polite. Uh, because if they have some rude, um, maybe uh, the driver got angry then they have a long time to discuss. Mm -hmm. Police avoid that situation. They need to have a lot of, a lot of things. So yeah. I agree with you. I think, I mean, like I was saying, in the United States, police are not seen as the most polite of, you know, public servants. Um, as, a, as a whole, they are considered more to be, you know, tough, um, much more, you know, business, or I mean, they have the mentality of they're the enforcers, you know. Um, they enforce the law. They There have been many cases of police brutality, uh, people, victims of police brutality. 
who have been hurt by the police, unfairly treated by the police. So when I watch a TV and drama, very old story, police mm -hmm. was very rude. Before. In the U.S. Yeah, in Japan. Making populists out of fools. Very <laughs> popular people are just so popular these days that they just don't care about what they post and stuff. <laughs> hey, Heidi, how's it going? Hello. Nice to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you as well. Uh, let me see. My face is so dark because it's sunset right now. I'm going to try to put some light on this so you guys can see me better. Okay, it's okay. Nice. So, yeah, Pakistan. <laughs> Pakistan. <laughs> Still continuing our conversation. You know, I have a lot of friends from Pakistan, and they... It's difficult to categorize a society based on just one article or one, you know, perspective. But uh, there are really a lot of ways that I think uh, people... There are so many ways that people struggle, right? I mean, in their daily lives. Uh, in some societies more than others. Um, but, you know, honestly, like from some of my friends that I, who I've talked to, um, Pakistan is, is very... Um, it's a nation of contrasts, right? If you have money, if you have connections, you can get away with anything. Mm. You know, I mean, the politicians are drinking, and no ranger is stopping them. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, politicians drinking all the time, and uh, mm. the corruption is, is really extreme in a country mm. like Pakistan. Mm. 